Toji, has taken over as everyone's new favourite character. This is largely because of his impressive abilities and how he was able to effectively kill Gojo. But today he won't be matched up against any average sorcerer. He will be matched up against Maharaga, the Shinigami trump card of the Ten Shadows technique. Maharaga is the most powerful Shinigami in its arsenal, and there was only one Ten Shadows user in history to have ever tamed him. That being Sukuna, the King of Curses. But before we jump into today's video, I'd like to ask you to maybe consider hitting that like and subscribe button, as I would really appreciate it and it helps me out a lot. And maybe while you're at it, check the description to find our official TikTok, which is where we upload all our shorts that you get here on YouTube, hours if not days before. Now let's begin with the main reason you clicked this video, and that is Toji. Toji is one of the strongest characters in JJK. He has no trouble taking on and defeating special grade level opponents. He took down a pre-awakened Gojo, using not only his incredible strength, but also his genius strategic planning. After destroying Gojo in their recent 1v1, he would go on to wreck Team Ghetto. Ghetto, who is supposedly a top 4 character. I say supposedly because to me, that boy barely hit in top 10. But that's a topic for another video. After he destroys Ghetto, the next time we see him in action is against an awakened Gojo. Unlike before, this Gojo is equipped with a reverse curse technique, as well as the red and purple limitless attacks. He was able to tank Gojo's red attack like it was nothing, before eventually he was one-shotted by Gojo's purple. The next time we see our boy is after he gets revived by the seance technique in Shibuya. He was not only able to knock out a grade 2 sorcerer, but also had the ability to humiliate Dagon, the special grade cursed spirit whose power was also amped due to being in his domain. Unfortunately, his time would come to an end shortly after this, by none other than himself. One of Toji's biggest strengths comes from his fast arsenal of weapons, made possible by his inventory curse. This coupled with his incredible mastery of weapons makes him easily top 3 fighters in the series. Toji wields his prized inverted spear of heaven. This negates any defensive curse technique as long as it hits its target. This was even able to work on Gojo's Limitless, which is really quite impressive. He also has the Split Soul Katana, which is potentially one of the most dangerous weapons in the series. It is currently in Maki's possession and it allows for him to negate durability to a certain degree. With this blade, he can cut someone's soul no matter how tough or durable they are. But of course, if these ain't enough to get the job done, he also has the Chain of a Thousand Miles, which allows him to close the range between him and his target. As he attaches his weapon to the chain and hides the end that he is holding, he can increase the range of his attack almost indefinitely, as the chain is said to extend on forever. And then we come to the Playful Cloud, which is the giant set of nunchucks that takes the user's raw power and amplifies it. Toji used these to destroy Dagon and all of his toughest Shikigami. Now for his other abilities. He's immune to domain expansion and their guaranteed hits, due to him not having any cursed energy. He was also able to see curses and jujitsu with his elevated senses, and even develop a resistance against them. This is due to him having all his five senses fully heightened to their absolute peak. An ability that is potentially the strongest and most useful one in a fight against Maharaga. But now let's talk about the feats and abilities of Maharaga. Maharaga really hasn't been around long, but has already left quite an imprint in JJK. Despite such a small time in the series, Maharaga still reigns as one of the most dangerous characters in the series. He is believed to be the second strongest curse spirit behind Rika, the Queen of Curses. His only real showing of power was against the 15 fingered Sukuna, who had just finished humiliating special grade curse spirit Jogo. In the first stage of their encounter, Sukuna not only tanked an attack from him, but also responded by dodging his attack and repeatedly punching him in the face before Maharaga could even react. It's here that it becomes clear that a 15-fingered Sukuna is far outclassing him in speed. Sukuna then proceeds to hit Maharaga with some dismantle slashes. It's through this exchange that Sukuna learns the initial attack was a positive energy imbued blade, and if he was a cursed spirit, he would have died. He also notices that once the wheel on Maharaga's head spun, the injuries from the dismantle slashes healed. Sakuna then attempts to hit him with another dismantled attack, but this time Maharaga deflects it. It's then revealed that Maharaga through the 8 handled wheel on top of his head can adapt to any stimuli directed at him. This can be used defensively, as if he's hit with the same attack, he'll simply deflect it. He can also adapt to the enemy's defense, and then hit them with a sufficient amount of power to break through. Whether that be through the weakness like positive energy to cursed spirits, or simply overpowering them in cursed energy 
like he did against Sukuna. Now, shortly before Sukuna was able to confirm Maharaga's ability, Maharaga adapted to Sukuna's durability from his first attack. He would go on to simply smack Sukuna so hard, he flew through four buildings. Once Maharaga realized that the only counter to Sukuna was just overpowering him, he was able to do just that. But Sukuna expected this, and he prepared for the oncoming attack. By using his superior strength and speed, he managed to put his hands in front of him to prepare for the oncoming attack. But yet, Maharaga sent him flying which should place Maharaga's attack power far above base Sukuna's after adapted. This proves just how strong this adapting ability is. So basically, if you can't kill Maharaga in the first attack, you better have different and stronger attacks to throw at him, which is exactly what Sukuna did. Realizing that Maharaga would just keep adapting to Sukuna's attack and increasing his attack power to match it, Sukuna decided to go all out with his domain expansion. Using his domain, Sukuna relentlessly slashes Maharaga with both cleave and dismantle, along with decimating the entire surrounding area to dust. But because Maharaga already adapted to his dismantle, he was able to withstand the brunt of 15 Fingers Sukuna's domain expansion, something only Gojo could do. Now unfortunately before Maharaga could fully regenerate and adapt yet again, Sukuna takes out a fire arrow and launches it at Maharaga, blowing him up before he could adapt, making the exorcism ritual void, saving Megami. So yeah, his strength really depends on just what the enemy can throw at him. And that's pretty much it for Maharaga and his abilities. Now let's talk about how he would match up against our boy Toji in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Now when it comes to a matchup between these two, it solely depends on Toji's ability to even hit Maharaga with the Soul Split Katana, as Toji's attacks are all purely physical and pretty much just raw power, meaning once Maharaga adapts to this, it's pretty much over. Plus, we have to consider that Toji's Katana may not even work on Maharaga. Realistically, with Toji, any fight comes down to one thing, and that's his speed. We see this clearly in Toji's fight versus Ghetto's toughest and most durable cursed spirit, where he terminated it with ease, due to his immense speed. So first let's discuss if Toji has the speed to even land a hit on Maharaga in the first place. Now when it comes to Toji and his speed, his greatest attribute comes from his precognition. He has this due to his heightened senses, and knowing how his enemy will move before they actually do it. This is apparent in the Gojo fight where there's a panel where Toji senses Gojo's counter and moves himself out of the way. So just because they are moving before the attack lands, doesn't mean they are moving faster than the attack is sent. Now another thing we should take into account is, the offense of chapter 215 show a 15 fingered Sukuna who has taken over Megami's body, fighting both an awakened Maki and an enraged Yuji. While Sukuna's curse technique was nerfed, he still had the physical stats he did in Shibuya. Now Yuji, but specifically Maki, who is considered by many to be equal to Toji, was a contender for 15-fingered Sukuna. I mean, Sukuna even held Maki's strength in high regard, and it's clearly more relative when it comes to raw power, which would mean Toji is relative to a 15-fingered Sukuna in raw power, and assuming that both Toji and Maharaga would start their base, with Maharaga's base being well below Sukuna's speed, that would place Toji, who is relative to a 15-fingered Sukuna, over Maharaga in speed. So now that we've established that he can hit Maharaga with the Soul Split Katana, we have to ask, will it even work? Because soul damage, as seen numerous times throughout the series, is not something you could simply heal from. It's also not something everyone can attack or even be aware of. Now we must remember that it is stated that Maharaga can also adapt to any stimuli directed towards it. So does that include soul damage? Now a pretty interesting topic that I've seen float around in the JJK community is if Reverse Curse Technique, or in this case Maharaga's adapting ability, can heal the soul. This is something Akutami has yet to confirm, but I would assume that it can. Because Kenjaku said in chapter 91 that the soul was the body and the body was the soul. I know, it's kind of confusing, but bear with me. To put it simply, because someone can heal their body, by manipulating the soul, then surely Maharaga can heal the soul by adapting his body to the soul katana. I mean, we see a curse room now, yeah, get hit by a soul split katana over and over again and just simply heal from it. Like, even Gojo right now in the manga is fighting against Sukuna and is somehow using reverse CT to recharge his limitless technique, which was burnt out after using a domain expansion. The same limitless curse technique that is tied to the soul. 
So in the case of the soul split katana being able to cut straight to the soul, I believe that really only pertains to bypassing durability and is not actually doing some sort of special unhealable damage. Which would mean the slashes from the soul split katana won't amount to much once Maharaga simply adapts to it. Soon after this we can expect Maharaga to adapt his speed and power to actually manage to harm Toji. So once again, I reiterate, the only way to defeat Maharaga is either in a one hit attack, or to attack with multiple abilities that are equal or greater in power than the last one used. Take Sukuna for example, he had to use Malevolent Shrine, and then use Fire, just to take him out. Oji can only stab slash pound his opponents. So even though we've already established that Toji has a way better attack power and attack speed than a baseline Maharaga, once Maharaga adapts to this power and speed, Maharaga will simply end him. So yeah, that's about it. Maharaga will win in the end against Toji, with little to no effort needed. What do you guys think? Could Toji somehow pull out a trick or two and end up winning against Maharaga? Tell me that in the comments below. But that's going to do it for me in this video. If you enjoyed and would like more matchup content like this in the future, tell me in the comments below. With that said, I hope you all have a great day and peace.